Welcome to another sad today of learning to take care of ourselves, uh, drawing from uh, teachings from ancient traditions from India and China and Buddhism, also in both uh, continents and here in modern findings of the uh, Buddhist uh, monks working with scientists and exploring what's happening with the brain, with the mind, and uh, how can we cultivate more healthy minds and more healthy environments. There is a lot that um, in our present times, see, there are so many challenges and we are very aware of them. Um, they are right in our face one way or another about environmental destruction, about uh, racism, about trauma uh, and abandonment, neglect uh, also at, in families sometimes or um, in relationships. So there are, and then the political problems and the economic and health-wise, you know, the pandemic. So everything is just kind of knocking at our door and saying, hey, um, maybe, is something that can be changed here at a personal level or at a, and at a community level. And so I would like to talk with you today about interconnectedness and integration and about um, this concept of the self, the little self, the bigger self or, or Buddha nature, you know, this greater consciousness of which we are all um, expressions in and belong, you know, like if we were individual waves of a vaster sea of consciousness and awareness, and we have in ourselves the potential to awaken to always greater consciousness and, and then to also implement and embody that in our life. And um, through simple practices, mainly just training our attention to notice our mental processes, our relational ways of connecting with each other and um, how we connect with ourselves. So there is a lot of potential there, intrapersonal, so how we relate to ourselves, positive neuroplasticity, interpersonal, how we relate to each other also in more positive ways, leaning more towards the positive, sometimes our own fears and worries, um, self-doubt, sometimes anger, grief, um, create this separation from ourselves or from others. And so how to come back again to more integration and to inner peace and balance. Um, we have been working with those concepts particularly this week. Here there are several of my students from the course Meditation, Volunteering and Positive Neuroplasticity. And we have this challenge uh, that goes for the eight weeks of the course, but I invite you also to participate in this and even afterwards of cultivating positive neuroplasticity, of leaning towards the positive when our natural tendency is to go a bit towards the negative because we worry and we want to somehow uh, solve our problems and we keep just mainly uh, approaching that from thinking, 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 and sometimes that limits us. So um, there are other approaches also for caring and building interconnection and integration. And so we were working uh, this week also with the work of Matthew Ricard, probably many of you know him. Uh, he's a Buddhist monk that spends uh, at least half of his year in the Himalayas in silent retreat. And uh, he was trained as a scientist uh, in France in a very well uh, recognized um, scientific center, the Pasteur Center and comes from a family of scientists. And then he became a monk and continued with his 
uh, trying to understand the mind in different ways. And he cooperates a lot with Richie Davison and other scientists that uh, at the invitation of the Dalai Lama, they are um, trying to test through scientific ways and express with scientific language uh, all this empirical science of the mind that comes from India and China and also really uh, testing uh, different ways of how we respond, how we react, what's happening in our brain, in the rest of our nervous system, in different organs. Um, and so it's very interesting, the collaboration of scientists and um, spiritual teachers trying to discover practical ways um, to bring to the Western world and to the modern world uh, tips on how to keep developing the full potentiality of the human being. So this is one of the books by Matthew Ricard. He has a book on why meditate and he has this other book on happiness and several other books. And he has also several TED Talks. I'm just holding the book so that you can see the spelling of his name in case you want to look him up. Um, he has several TED, TED Talks. And in our course, we were looking at one that is about let altruism guide you. You know, uh, notice what's happening in the world. Um, when we don't care about the next generations or about nature and about the planet and realize that we, we can contribute a little bit uh, in our own measure to, to do still some changes for the positive. And, um, and so he has a very lovely meditation that I want to practice with you today. Uh, that has four components. And the first one is altruistic love. I think you are going to recognize within this meditation echoes of uh, the loving kindness meditation that we have practiced before, uh, which also comes from Buddhism. And uh, I love this one because uh, this particular meditation that Matthew Ricard teaches, because he says, um, it's important to practice mindfulness, and we know, you know, around the world there is all there is a great interest on in meditation and mindfulness. Mindfulness being being the training of attention to the present moment without negative ju judging. So bringing like a loving awareness to whatever processes arise in the focus of your mind, like if they were in front of a mirror and you are contemplating that and first getting to know them instead of running away from them, getting to know them and then seeing how you can uh, keep breathing, keep relaxing, and then how you can keep working with these processes first by getting to know them, to know them well. So that's one form of bringing attention, you know, starting to train the attention. And what Matthew Ricard says is it's very good to practice mindfulness. It's already much better than not practicing any kind of training of the attention and then going through life blindly reacting to things without even noticing you know, what we are doing, uh, usually increasing our suffering and increasing sometimes the suffering of others. And that's, of course, a very Buddhist, uh, again, understanding life hits you with an arrow. You can work directly with that problem, that challenge, that you can start resisting it. Why me? Why now? And the more arrows that you hit yourself with. So how to train in mindfulness so that one is present with the present moment is already a very good training. What Matthew Ricard says is uh, you also would benefit a lot from besides uh, being able to observe the processes of your mind and uh, working with them, if you would purposely cultivate um, positive qualities, like for example, love, love and kindness and 
rejoicing in the goodness of others and um, equanimity, being able to bring these feelings not only to the ones that you would naturally feel the feelings for, your loved ones or your circle, but to a bigger circle. So he says, that's what we need, uh, starting with altruistic love, to be able to contribute in our own measure to change this mind that when it goes blind creates problems and it creates problem at our level, personal level, but in a way it's also present in, you know, in racism, racism and environmental destruction, etc. Those challenges, those uh, bad news are happening because if we think of the mind, not only as a personal mind, but as a culture uh, experience that we all share, that we share different groups, share it in a different way. But, uh, you know, it's so important to start with each unit, with each person. And that's our most direct contribution to um, the changing and the resolving of these problems. It's also the most effective and most direct one, because if we just get very angry about the politicians or very sad about the destruction uh, that's happening in the world, etc., but we only mainly just stay in that stage of our reaction or responding, it's not helping anyone. So if we want to make some kind of a change, we need to start working with ourselves. And that one plus one plus one, we plus our groups, our communities, etc., eventually, slowly changes, changes the greater culture. That's our only hope, you know, and our most direct way, just allowing ourselves to be disempowered and uh, sunken into grief and sunken into anger and despair and all that doesn't help us or the situation or anyone else who's involved with it. So it's a, it's a very uh, wonderful thing in a way because it shows that we are alive and that we care, but in itself doesn't solve anything. So you would say, well, the problems are so big that you know me working on this, what is it going to, what is it going to do? And I somebody was, uh, sharing with me this morning a little parable about this little kid that is in the uh, at the beach and there are there has been a lot of uh, trouble sea you know that has sent big waves and sent many uh, sea stars uh, out into the beach and the child is you know getting one sea star is that what it's called sea star well, Estrella de Mar in Spanish. Star, starfish. 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 Thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. So the child sees, you know, all these thousands of starfish and starts taking one and throws it back into the sea. And sometimes the sea, not so rough like before, but still rough, sends it, sends it back. And the child sends it again in the sea. And so an older guy goes by and says, Let them be. They are all going to die. And the child looks at him, picks a sea star and says, not this one. <laughs> so, you know, we must never give up. Any little action counts. And so before we do the meditation that uh, Matthew Ricard teaches, I want to also share with you another parable that's, I think, sometimes these stay in the mind and remind you of the main points. Um, so you may have heard it or not, but there was in a faraway land <laughs> many years ago, a monastery where um, there were monks and nuns um, of different ages. And um, somehow they, they have lost hope. They, uh, they couldn't find their motivation to keep their practice steady uh, every day. Um, some of the old monks were dying. Uh, there were fights in between uh, some of the monks or 
the monks and the nuns didn't have such a great relationship. They had a, used to have a beautiful garden. They were not taking care anymore of the garden. Um, some of the people were leaving the commune, you know, the monastery. Nobody knew was coming in. So they were just kind of, the whole thing was crumbling down. So then the abbot, the director there, decided to go into the mountain to a wise person and ask, um, in this case, it's a woman. <laughs> That was the wise, wise person that was meditating up there in the mountains. Um, so he comes to her and says, you know, this is what, what's happening in our community. Um, can you help us? Can you give us some solution? And so the two of them sit and meditate for a while in silence. You know, when you meditate, insights come to you because other thoughts and preoccupations go away and then insights come. So they both meditate together, and at the end of their meditation together, she tells him, I don't really have a solution that I can give you, but I can tell you one thing. Among all of you, there is the one who's going to wake up. So you know that the Buddha, Buddha means the one that has awakened. And it's not just one that Buddha, you know, but it's that it, there have been many Buddhas, and there is a saying that now that we have uh, in the scripture somewhere, that now that we have really troublesome times, 500 Buddhas are going to appear. And I hope at least half of them are women, but okay, so <laughs> never mind. <laughs> uh, so she tells the, the abbot, uh, I can tell you one thing for sure. Among all of you, there is, you know, the Buddha is coming, the Bodhisattva, and then, you know, whoever is going to awaken is among all of you. So he goes back and tells the community, look, she couldn't give us a direct solution, but she told me that among us is the one that's going to awaken. And so they were very surprised. And they, in the relationship with one another, started thinking, oh, maybe this person that I'm, you know, now uh, relating to, talking, is the one who's going to, to awaken. And so they were more respectful. They were more caring. You know, they were holding the possibility that. And then um, that already improved a bit the relationships. And then they, they started thinking, maybe I'm the one who is about to awaken. So then they dedicated more to the practices. They found new inspiration. And since in Buddhism, uh, because of this idea of reincarnation, um, it depends on how you live your life now. When you die, you might come back to continue learning. And sometimes <laughs> you might come back, not in the shape of a, of a human, but of an animal or a plant or whatever. So they, 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 they saw, oh, maybe this little plant that I'm cultivating is the one that's growing up to be <laughs> the Buddha and this animal. And so they started being so much more loving and caring to their plants and their animals and to each other and to support each other and themselves and, you know, just, trust that, that the process was going on and everything started to flourish. <laughs> and people that passed by, you know, saw how well they related, how lovely it was to be there. Some started to join the monastery, everything started to grow. <laughs> so I think this uh, very well illustrates these uh, two ideas of uh, interconnectedness and of how in uh, important and productive is to bring friendly feelings to ourselves and to others. You know, there are also many studies about results of different kinds of meditation. And according to, for example, uh, Richie Davison and Daniel Goleman, in their book, Altered Traits, where they were measuring different kinds of meditation, the one on loving kindness, on so this fostering and bringing up lovely, uh, friendly feelings, is the one that gives results more quickly and um, for a longer, you know, lasting time. So all the meditations are good, but you, when you engage your heart in this kind of opening up toward, towards the goodness and uh, cultivate it in your life, it's, it just works at so many different levels at the same time. And also in this concept that the mind is not just our mind within this 
skin of uh, bag of skin, but it's the way we resonate with each other and also the way we influence each other. And so uh, how to work on our, our mind and the mind <laughs> um, through these practices. So I like very much the way um, Matthew Ricard kind of starts with the usual uh, instructions for meditation, which we're going to do right now. And then he brings four stages uh, within the meditation. And so we are going to practice those four. And uh, also know that um, you could practice just one of them, you know, just for now, let's do the four of them together. But you can also practice, if you have only a little time, you could practice any of the four. To do the practice of uh, altruistic love, and then go into these four stages, um, we start, which I'm going to reveal as we do the practice. Um, we start like always with uh, sitting in a position that's uh, stable and comfortable so that the body doesn't need to struggle during the time that we are sitting. And it's good if you can have your spine straight in whatever measure you can. And perhaps even feel the spine a little bit elongated, like if an angel was pulling you up gently and the shoulders are relaxed we are resting into the pool of gravity so on the one hand the spine is straight and gently elongated and on the other hand the shoulders the muscles in the body the extremities are all relaxing feeling at the same time the support that the earth and the chair, your seat, are offering to you at this moment, and the relaxation, the resting in gravity. So relax, but not collapse. And from that initial position of being stable, comfortable. We start paying attention to our breath. Just noticing they are coming in and coming out and perhaps noting it, noticing as the movement in the chest or the abdomen. Or perhaps noticing as it touches the nostrils on the way in and the way out. bringing the attention to each inhalation and each exhalation. Surfing the waves of your breath. Allowing this breath of life to breathe through you like it does all the time when you're not paying attention also. But at this moment, we bring the attention to it. Surfing the breath of life. Your eyes can be open or closed. If they are open, perhaps it's a good idea to look down, not to get so distracted with the surroundings. And once in a while, 
a thought may appear. If that happens, and it happens to all of us, don't resist it because that would add more thoughts to the process, but just let it pass like a bird in the sky. So by not engaging with the thought, the bird can pass without leaving a stray, any trace. And you can be aware of the sky that is you, your attention. If more thoughts come, same thing. Just notice them and let them go. If for whatever reason your mind is engaging with the thoughts, that's okay too. Please don't judge yourself. Observe, oh, okay, this is what seems to be happening now. Bring your attention back to the breath and relax as you exhale. So after we have sat here for a moment, noticing how our body relaxes by bringing attention to the breath, Noticing how we can keep breathing, coming back to the sky and letting those birds go without following them. Then we are going to go to that second stage, if you will, of the meditation in this case, which is planting positive qualities by familiarizing ourselves with them, with experiencing them at this moment. That's also what meditation is. Bhavani means practice, familiarization. That's what meditation is. So let's familiarize ourselves first with the feeling of altruistic love which is a love that doesn't expect anything in return. For example, when you are with a baby, with a child, and you see that fragility, that innocence, and you just feel naturally love for that child, for that baby, and naturally wish that it will be happy, that it will not suffer, that it will have the conditions to bloom. That it will be healthy. So just remembering somebody in your life, if at all possible, a baby or a child, and if not, any other perhaps fragile person that with whom you have experienced a moment of love, and from whom you don't expect anything and just allow your natural love and caring for that person to arise and feel, feel yourself loving them. And wishing that they will experience peace and that they will protect it from suffering. and that they will reach their full potential, or even if they are old, that they would experience peace and be able to work with their difficulties.
feel yourself, the warmth that emanates from yourself towards this person. Almost like if you are the sun and you are giving warmth, radiating warmth towards him or her or they. And now that you naturally brought yourself to that tender, caring space, that warmth in your heart, expand that sensation of being a sun that radiates warmth and light to a much bigger group that could be all human beings, all living beings, or if that's too general, then maybe a smaller group that you can also feel this altruistic love, this just friendly feelings and caring that they will not suffer, that they will know the roots of sufferings and that they, those roots will dissolve from the knowing and the working is it. So the same as you had for that child or that fragile person, open up this feeling of warmth to a bigger group, your family, if you like, your friends, whatever group, this group that is here with us today, or the whole of humanity, if that's something that feels natural to you right now. altruistic love, just sending love without expecting anything in return. Now that we have been for a moment in this space of potentiality of opening up, softening ourselves to experience love in ever wider concentric circles of caring. The second of the four stages in the meditation that Matthew Ricard teaches is compassion. So when altruism meets suffering, immediately compassion arises. So as we see someone suffering, we can bring to our mind a friend, a relative, a person we have come across that we notice they are suffering, they are struggling. Just sending them wishes that they, the, their suffering will be alleviated and also the roots of the suffering will be revealed and will dissolve. So you are wishing them to alleviate their suffering and also to for the whole process to happen uh, in whatever way they participate or not, but just compassionate understanding and caring for the suffering they are right now and wishing that it will be relieved. Okay, just pick one or two people and send that compassion to them, that caring and compassion.
And perhaps it's even someone with whom you are having problems. So if that feels natural for you right now, sending this caring and compassion to the person. May your suffering be relieved. May the causes of suffering, which usually is confusion, fear, sense of a separate self, may that be revealed to you in your journey. May, by understanding them, may them be solved. So you are wishing the person to continue in his or her evolution journey and you are putting down your judgment of them or antagonism or even fear or anger, just, so choose either someone that you naturally want to accompany in their suffering and be relieved or someone that you're having trouble and still work with yourself to wish them that their suffering be relieved by greater understanding in their life without judging them. And see the process happening. So just send the blessing and imagine that the person is receiving this blessing. Sometimes when one is sending compassion to bigger groups, the question arises, well, how can I send compassion to someone who's creating suffering? And you are not sending them the desire that they will continue to do the bad deeds. You are just sending this compassion that they will awaken to a deeper uh, nature within themselves that will then stop the greed, the corruption, the violence. So it's always possible to engage in that way. And that's what Matthew Ricard often reminds us that we can keep sending this wish that the roots of suffering will be revealed and that then people will continue in their journey and will uh, arrive to more understanding, whatever form that needs to happen. And sometimes we see so much distraction, ecological distraction, uh, people suffering, sometimes at the hand of other people, that our heart sunks. And to counteract that comes the third step in this meditation, which is rejoicing in the goodness of people that, that you have seen uh, personally or uh, internationally that, that are working or have work in embodying this moving forward in the journey of evolution. Say like Mother Teresa, or maybe someone in your life that you have seen or in your profession that, um, that is always serving, is always helping um, somebody in your group. So just rejoice in human nature as you see it expressed in other humans. So that's that's an antidote to 
being feeling depressed uh, with the corruption or the violence or the destruction. So these, these four stages in the meditation that Matthew Ricard teaches uh, work in supporting this altruism, recognizing that also there will be moments in which we might feel uh, despair or hopeless, hopelessness. And so from that, to get out of that hole, rejoice in the goodness that you can remember or that you have seen personally or through other media, cultivated, being cultivated in human beings towards other human beings. You can just pick one or two examples and bask yourself in that. Um, experience of taking in the good. And also I would say rejoice in the moments that you have uh, embodied this compassion and this moving forward. in whichever little measure or big measure it has been, every part counts. Your reaction sometimes seems small, but it all counts in our lives and in the lives of others. And smile to yourself and smile to those people that you see as example of cultivating those qualities that can help us all. Smiling is good, softens your heart and lifts you up like wings, wings. <laughs> And so the fourth stage in the meditation after altruistic love, compassion, and rejoicing in the goodness of others and of yourself, the fourth one is um, impartiality. Impartiality, or sometimes people call it equanimity. equanimity. And is reminding ourselves that this positive altruistic love compassion, rejoicing, um, especially altruistic love and compassion, we don't just uh, reserve it for the people that are immediate to us, right? Like it's natural that we will feel love and caring and tenderness for our family and our friends, but knowing that the same way that we, uh, that it arises in ourselves for our immediate group, it can also from there be extended to much bigger group and it doesn't get lost. I love that Matthew Ricard says it's not like a cake that if you give a piece to one, you are not giving a piece to somebody else. In fact, it's more like the sun. The more that you open your heart and express your warmth, uh, it will benefit more people and it will also benefit the ones that you love because you'll be exercising that love, the, that muscle of loving, that natural caring tendency with everyone. So, um, and then also with your love, your immediate ones. So the immediate ones get more the warmth of the sun, he says. And the ones that are a little bit further, maybe don't get it so intense, but you are all the time, or as a possibility that can, can become true, uh, cultivating this opening and warming up. 
and maybe just remembering just like me this person is also trying to be happy just like me this person has fears or insecurities just like me this person is trying to prove something to himself or herself or others just like me this person also has people that he or she loves and you know just so opening ourselves not just to the immediate circle which is the natural thing that we usually do but seeing if we can extend it to others so just for a moment imagine expanding that that circle opening your arms <laughs> and embracing <laughs> I know sometimes you feel, no, I'm not going to do this. <laughs> but just give it a try and see how, you, how it feels. Just don't force it either. Include whoever feels more or less natural beyond your usual circles, okay? So let's just for a moment sit with that part of the, the fourth component of the meditation. You can start for our people here, you know, for our community, the other people that might be listening, your neighbors, your school, your workplace, so many groups. Okay. Smiling to the people that are coming, walking around your neighborhood and they are crossing to the other side of the street because they are concerned that maybe there could be some risk of catching uh, COVID and just smiling, okay. Maybe you cross, maybe they cross, but you can still smile to each other, for example one of many examples. Just like me, you want to be healthy. or even smiling to the unvaccinated people. Just like me, you want to be healthy. You just understand it differently. <laughs> or anyone you want to include. So these are the four stages that of the meditation that uh, Matthew Ricard teaches. And he also says, sometimes, and it's true, if you, if you have meditated or whether you are new to it, sometimes you sit and meditating and then you reach a plateau. You know, like maybe you are feeling the love for the child, for the people in your life and whatever, and you just are in that and you apparently don't want to move from it. So that's in itself plenty. But you can do that, or you can also decide, okay, I'm going to open myself a little bit more, and then I'm going to include then the remembrance of someone who's suffering and sending that person the relief, the uh, desire that their suffering will be relieved. And sometimes thinking about all the suffering might bring you down, and so then you go into the taking in the good, the rejoicing in that there is hope, that there are people that are still bringing the best that they can, and you also bring in the best that you can. And, and then uh, at one point you might reach a plateau on 
you know, there is some people, yeah, and I'm so, but not, not everyone. Okay, then go into impartiality and just go, okay, all those other ones that are apparently doing nothing, just like me, somehow they are limited by their circumstances or whatever, and I'm just going to include them all into this opening of my heart. So that, that's a beautiful way of staying within the general subject of cultivating altruistic love and of this interconnectedness and integration, the differentiation, you know, people have different ways to uh, think about things, education, health, whatever, but there could still be linking, you know, we can still all belong to the human condition. And uh, so that's, that's the meditation, which I thought, I find it a very beautiful example of, um, integration and interconnectedness. And if you will, another vari variation of the loving kindness, but also with the understanding that, that in this way, we are working to not only change our mind, to change our brain, to change our mind. So, you know, uh, looking at our perspectives and cultivating things that create new groups so that then those new groups can support our new perspectives and new intention. At, at a personal level, but at this point with the altruistic lab and these four components, we are also working in the fact that we are part of that bigger mind, that culture that, uh, that uh, also needs to keep being refreshed and heal and uh, push forward a little bit, <laughs> support it forward if you like. Uh, so I, I think uh, it adds, it, it's, it's a slightly different take, but I, I find it very meaningful, especially in these times of so many challenges. I was going to teach you some um, movement of Qigong, but I see it's already 307. I mean, we could do a mini, mini, mini one just to move a little bit. And talking about mini, mini one, uh, here is a possible homework for the week for this loyal uh, community that shows up here most Saturdays and everyone else who wants to do it. Several times a day, think of one or two people and send them love. So if you keep pausing in your day and remembering someone and sending them love, one people, two people, and do it several times a day, you'd be practicing the muscle of caring and it's, it's like a little bit, it's almost like stretching, but you are doing your computer instead of that, you're doing the stretching of your heart. <laughs> and it's great. It takes you a little bit for a moment away with your concerns about yourself and your life and you know the many things that need still to be done and whatever other things. And it takes you towards the space of softening, of caring. And I deeply believe that we are all really interconnected and that that sending love, although it seems just kind of unquantifiable, it does have results. So uh, try it and see how it goes. And now a very mini, mini uh, uh, practice with uh, Chico. I'm just tapping my legs because lately, since I sprained my ankle, I tend to go numb so much more quickly in my legs. So I'm still in the process of recovery. Okay, here we are. Oh. So to experience this sense of love and interconnection uh, with each other, with everything around us, and also with the earth and the heavens, we are going to do a practice that we have done before that comes from Qigong, uh, which also has this concept of continuity of body, mind, and spirit, and of each one of us with the heavens and the heavens and the earth and each other. And so the movement is going to have the hands, we're going to raise our arms to the side, and then the hands are going to come down and scoop from, from the earth 
are going to come up in this position I'm showing you here so that you can see more clearly. We move this through the very center of our bean. Around here, the hands are going to be back to back, like in prayer, but this way, not this way, but this way. And then they keep going up. And after they pass your forehead and go a little bit further up, they are going to pivot and form a triangle, which is going to be a little bit higher than your head. But if I put it there, you will not be able to see it right now. And then with the center of your palms here, when you come down, you are drawing this circle of light and you are in the center of a circle of light, receiving it and also radiating it in a continuum, okay? So what I usually think when I bend, I feel that, okay, I'm ready to receive what life puts in my plate, what the earth gives me. And then I process it through the center of my being. And when I go up, I just kind of keep back with all the things that are beyond my control, put it back into the universe that it will keep processing it so that it can get solved and then I just take in the light, being showered with light, and also open myself to emanate life, and life and light, and then down again and processing. We are going to do it three times, okay? So we start with the feet shoulder width apart, body straight and relax. Feel the connection with the earth. Feel the alignment by imagining the head being a sphere, perfectly balanced on top of the sphere of the chest both of them on top of the sphere of the abdomen and that's supported by the hips, the legs and the feet. And an unbroken column of energy riding from the pelvic floor to the top of the head through the very center of these three spheres. So we are aligned and relaxed. And we are ready to begin, inhale, let your hands and arms float to the side and then bending from the waist, bowing to the earth, receiving what the earth and life gives us, ready to process it with loving awareness to the center of our being. And then like in prayer, giving it back to the universe for the process to be completed and opening to receive the blessings, being in the circle of light and emanating light also from our heart. Let's do two, three more. At your own pace, I'll be silent. Maybe you can work with something in particular that you are processing, accepting, blessing. One last time. Come slowing the hands and arms to the sides. Bringing the feet together, the hands together like in prayer to the forehead. 
We remember love one and send love and caring, peace. And from that space of caring, we lower our hands, center ourselves at our heart. And again, think of someone who is struggling right now and send her or him this rift of love, of peace. May their burden be lifted. They feel accompanied. They find inner strength and peace. And whatever other wishes you want to send their way, imagine that they are receiving these blessings as you send them. If they multiply, they are inside you and they multiply in them, in both of you interconnected. Smiling. And also smiling and sending blessings to everyone in our community and everyone who might be practicing today and to all living beings. May there be peace. May there be healing. Thank you. Hope that some of these practice, even any little part that resonated with you, if you can practice a little bit every day, that's the way that the transformation happens. Thank you for coming today.